Welcome to Her Life Unscripted Podcast, inspiring burnt out, stressed out, and stretched thin women to embrace the unscriptedness of life. Hosted by Anna Osborne. Hello, lovely ladies. Welcome to Her Life Unscripted, episode 79. I am your host, Anna Osborne, coming to you live from the Her Life Unscripted studios here in Sacramento, California. It is a wonderful last week of November to be here with all of you. And it's actually our final show for the year, which seems incredible to me. I can hardly believe that this is the last show for the year, but it is. So we are going to have it be full of lots of great things. So I want you guys all to know that I kind of alluded to this at the show the beginning of November of just that there are some a lot of changes going on in terms of my business and good changes, exciting changes. And they're all going to unfold while we are on hiatus for the month of December. So for those of you that follow me online and that reach out via Twitter and and Facebook and and email and things like that, you will see some of those changes being unveiled. And so I don't want you to worry that the podcast is changing or going away or anything like that. I can't fully give the timeline of kind of everything being rolled out. I anticipate it'll happen next week, the the first week of December, if everything goes according to plan. But with any big change shift, there is usually what I plan to have happen and what actually happens, which I know is why her life unscripted exists in the first place. So I just want to give all of you guys a heads up that if you're seeing changes out there online in the next few weeks, I will give a full recap of them when we resume in January. And not to worry, the show is not going anywhere. I am not going anywhere. But that's just kind of what's happening behind the scenes. And also, like I said, we are taking the month of December off. I tend to be somebody that once I start doing something and I've committed to it, I have a hard time letting it go. And so my commitment to you guys back in the beginning, I guess, middle of 2016 was that this would be a weekly show. And it has been the weekly show. And I also took September off because I had a huge event that was going on and I just didn't have the emotional capacity to give to the show what I wanted to. And there was a part of me that felt like, oh my gosh, you're letting the listeners down, right? (laughs) You've told them this is a weekly show and you're disappearing for a month. And then I realized that I needed to get over myself and that, you know, things done consistently are just as important as you know, the reality versus trying to be perfect with anything. And also I, you know, I'm taking the month of December off and the same thing, really being able to finish up this big project I've got going on to be able to create it and release it to all of you guys come the new year. And so like we talked about last week in terms of bad advice. Bad advice is when you've got all these opportunities in front of you and you tell yourself to take them all rather than really being able to slow down and, and see what can be set down for the moment so you can absorb that energy and give it to something else. So that's really what I'm doing in the month of December. But I really just want to give a sincere thank you to all of you. You've made this year amazing and it continues to be a journey I learned, I, I learn and learn so much from. And I'm excited to just see you guys all in 2018. And um, yeah, I feel like I'm saying goodbye right now. But anyways, I just wanted to say thank you. But before we, you know, wrap up our final show of 2018, we've got to start it, right? And so today's show is all about advice. We've been talking about this idea of advice all month long, the the good, bad, and the ugly, right? And so today we really have an opportunity to to talk about good advice, great advice, in fact. And I had lots of you reach out and and offer that, which just feels so good to have you guys share your words. And I want to share a little bit about what the listeners shared about the great advice that they have received. And I have to say, I will also share my two people that have given me um, three of the best advices out there. Okay, so we're going to start with you guys, the listeners. In terms of being able to, you know, really advice that empowers us to create our best version of our life. 
that that advice is so powerful that when somebody really, you know, if we're looking for guidance and we're looking for support and they really tell us, you know what, do what's best for you, follow your heart, follow your spirit. And they encourage us to lean into what we know that that is amazing advice. And I love that perspective. I'm so glad that you guys wrote in and shared that one because I do. I feel like when people ask advice, there's nothing more powerful than being able to encourage them to answer their own question because these really cool things happen where they actually have an opportunity to see that they have really amazing advice to give themselves. And so for me, I love that this listener's best advice she's ever received is advice that really empowered her to trust herself and to create, you know, her own perfect day and her own perfect, you know, version of what she needed and not really kind of align that with anybody else. Another piece of great advice that you guys have received is this idea of working smarter, not harder. And this really fits for me in this kind of idea of, you know, needing to be all things to all people, but that is not working smarter. That's just working harder and being able to sometimes sit up, get some air and see the ways that we're being buried or almost have tunnel vision around what we're doing that ends up inadvertently making us just go absolutely nuts. Right. And so this idea of work harder, Work smarter, not harder. (laughs) I hope I'm saying that right. Work smarter, not harder, is that we have to be able to pause long enough to really look around and see if what we're doing in that moment really is the smartest thing or if we're doing it just because everybody else has done it. I love that story of kind of the, you know, new bride cooking dinner for her, Thanksgiving dinner for her family and her ham, and she's cooking a ham, right? And so she gets the ham out and she cuts off the two ends. And goes, puts it in the baking pan and the mother-in-law goes, why are you cutting the ends off that ham? And she goes, well, that's the way that you roast a ham. And the mother-in-law said, really? I've never even heard of that before. That's bizarre and whatever. So the, you know, the young bride calls her mom and says, why is it that, you know, you cut the ends off of a ham before you cook it? You know, my mother-in-law thought that was odd. And the, the mom says, well, I don't know. It's just the way that I've always done it. Um, it's the way you cook a ham, but I learned to cook it from your grandma. And so, you know, the, the young bride calls her grandma and says, you know, why is it that to cook a ham, you've got to cut the ends off both, uh, both sides. And the grandma goes, you don't. I just did that because I had a small oven and it was the only way I could fit the pan and the ham in the oven to cook it. Right. And so that's that idea of working smarter, not harder is that sometimes we've got to look up for you know, long enough to see some perspective to see whether or not it's actually necessary to keep doing what we've been doing. And is there something else that makes more sense? Do we need to pivot? Do we need to adjust? So I love that piece of advice. Thank you so much for sending that in. Another one that I needed to share is actually from my cousin who was sweet enough to write in. And her grandmother used to say this all the time, her Nana. And I knew her Nana um, for many, many years. Her, her grandparents were very close in our family. And, um, her nana used to always say the first hundred years are the hardest. And I love that advice, right? Anytime we would, you know, somebody would be overwhelmed with something here would be her very, very sweet nana with her sweet little Boston accent or, and she would come and say, you know what? The first hundred years are always the hardest. And that is amazing advice because really it means that every single time we do something for the first time, it feels impossible. And so just, you know, practice, repetition. That's how we learn things. And so any sort of advice that allows us to be human and imperfect, I think is wonderful advice. So thank you, Alana, for writing that one in. That made me think of your Nana and brought a smile to my face. And so now I want to share with you guys my best advice. So like I said to you, there's two people that have this advice has been something that I have, I have followed and I just really have it as part of kind of my mantra when things start getting overwhelming or I feel like I need guidance. Now, one of the people is somebody who, you know, I admire and I speak about a lot. She's a great activist, a writer, um, and just a very inspiring individual is Glennon Doyle Melton. And she has this, um, this idea of, you know, that I read about one time of being able to find moments to be present in. I think as women particularly, we're told over and over and over again, be present, be present. These years are going to go fast. Your kids are going to get up, 
grow up, time's going to pass and, you know, you're not going to be so young anymore and just all these things. And it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed by that. Right. And that advice of just be present, just be present, pay attention to these things. You know, I know these days seem long, but they're going to go by so fast. They make me feel overwhelmed. And so I read one time in one of Glennon's blogs, this idea of it's not about being present in every single moment. It's about when you find yourself in a moment, be present there, right? And for me, that it actually happened this morning. My son was, he's really into writing lists and check boxes so he can check things off. And so we're packing to go on a trip and he wants to know everything that we're going to pack so he can write them down and put a chalk box next to him and then check the list off. And this is just adorable, right? Except he's five years old and doesn't know how to spell many words and everything he wants to spell, I get to help him with. (laughs) So as I'm getting ready this morning and racing to get out the door, he wants to create this list of what we need to check off. Right. And so he's laying there on his belly in the bathroom as I'm, you know, kind of getting ready and he says something and I kind of look over at him and he's just furiously scribbling away, trying to get this checklist done. And he glances up at me and I just saw those eyes with this sweet smile on his face and this excitement that he was helping by creating a packing list. And I just soaked it up. There was something about his eyes just twinkling at me as he did this. And just the enthusiasm on his voice in his voice as he did this, that absolutely just spoke to my soul and made me so present with him in that moment. And it was this little blip of a moment. It wasn't didn't last more than a fraction of a second, but I just absolutely soaked it up. And that piece of advice has been absolutely grounding for me. And I'm so appreciative of this idea that when you find yourself in a moment, soak it in, be present. Don't have an expectation that you're going to be present in every single moment. But when you find yourself there, enjoy it. And that is honestly one of the best pieces of advice I've ever received. The second piece of advice that I really, um, you know, connect with or that something that I always hold on to is actually advice that I got from my mom. And my mom, you know, I'd ask her these questions about, you know, how do I know that I'm going to choose the right job? Or how do I know, you know, what love is or all these sorts of things. And her answer to me used to be, and still probably is if I asked her the same question um, about any of these things of uncertainty, she would say, you'll know when it's right. And for me, I, I used to just get so annoyed with that, right? Just give me a concrete answer, mom, right? Don't just tell me I'm going to know. And as I have been encouraged by her, which I am so deeply grateful to turn inward and know that when it's right, I'll know. I feel like I really have just honed in on the ability to know, to, to access that inner wisdom, that deep intuition, And so it really connects with this other piece of advice that is also from the lovely Glennon Doyle Melton, which is the next right thing. That when we find ourselves in in tragedy, in in terror, in, in confusion, all we need to do is the next right thing. And I love that piece of advice because it's right there in the moment. It's not three steps ahead. It's not a what if. It's just do the next right thing. And whatever feels like the right thing, when you have confusion, when you don't know what to do, it's really trusting that your body and your mind and your spirit and your soul is, is, is letting you know what that next right thing is. And it so connects with what my mom has said all these years, right? Is that when it's right, you'll know. Just do the next right thing. And it can take you out of the deepest, darkest paths. It's helped for me. And my encouragement to all of you is that if you are in the middle of a hard thing, just do the next right thing. Because when it's right, you'll know. And that's the second piece of advice that I just have, you know, really just stuck to and and tried my hardest to stay aligned with. Um, And I want to end today with a quote. I actually just randomly found this quote on my phone, which is so bizarre to me that I was going through pictures and saw this quote. And the quote is, the soul usually knows what to do to heal itself. The challenge is to silence the mind. And I literally just stumbled on this quote yesterday, and I made it my screensaver on my phone, because 
it absolutely aligns with this piece of advice that has been so beneficial in my life, right? Is that when it's right, you'll know. Just do that next thing. And so the soul does usually know what it needs to do to heal itself. But we've got to silence our mind in order to be still enough to be able to hear that inner wisdom. And so my encouragement to all of you, especially as we end this year, is that you're able to silence your mind in order to pay attention to your soul so that it can lead you to whatever healing, whatever letting go, laying down, um, that you need to close this year off. I know I'm actively working on that myself, and I just want you to know that I'm here doing it too, and that knowing you're doing it helps it make it a little bit easier. So thank you so much for a amazing 2017. Um, it's kind of like that word interesting, <laughs> amazing, right? It's There's been highs and there's been extreme lows. And I just am honored and privileged to be on this journey with all of you and to just be allowed into your world. And I thank you so much for all that you've shared with me. And I look forward to seeing you next year and to just share with all of you the 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 changes and the excitement and all the newness that's going on around. So thank you guys. Have a beautiful rest of your month and I will talk to you all in 2018. Bye-bye. Want to learn about the latest retreats, workshops, and speaking events hosted by Anna? Head over to HerLifeUnscripted.com to get in on all the juicy details. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast so we can continue to grow our amazing audience. Lastly, be sure and send in your voice feedback via the SpeakPipe app or to Anna at HerLifeUnscripted.com. We can't wait to hear from you.